Hello everyone and welcome to this Asana training video. In this video I really want to share what I think is a little bit more advanced but actually quite quite straightforward when you understand how it works, a uh, method for basically planning at three different levels. What I mean by levels is that I want to be able to plan my kind of more annual long-term goals, you know, what am I working on in the next couple of months or even this year? What are the big projects that are coming up? And then I want to get a view of, okay, what does the next few weeks look like? You know, what is my workload for the next few weeks? And then, of course, at a really granular level, what do I need to do today, tomorrow, and this week? In Asana, using the method that I'm about to show you, there is a, yeah, a pretty cool way that I've set up um, for, for tracking tasks and projects at these different levels um, using... A, a, a project structure that I've created. Now, if you need um, more one-on-one -on -one support after watching this video, then please feel free to click the link in the description below this video to book a complimentary 30-minute call with me. And I'd love to have a chat, see how I could potentially work with you to improve your own use of Asana. Alternatively, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment below this video. So, getting into it. Now, in previous videos, I've already talked about the difference between what I call kind of primary or evergreen projects. So in my account here, you can see I've got sort of departments or areas of my business. I've got administration, business, products, content, sales, and personal. These are kind of the main evergreen projects that never really expire, they're just always ongoing. And this is where I really manage and create the bulk of my tasks. At the top of my list here, I have two what I call summary projects, or they're often referred to as reference projects. I call them summary projects because they summarize the most important tasks from these different primaries. Now, I never really create tasks in these summaries. I actually use the summaries to pull in tasks from other projects. So, starting with the calendar, this calendar is basically showing me the big tasks, the big projects that are going to uh, take up my time in the next few months or looking forward this year. So I've got a few big things for September, October, November, and so on. And actually, this is this is probably not a great time to look at it. It's not that well planned out right now. It's It's got a few big bricks in here, but I actually, uh, I need to um, add a few more big projects into here. Now, really, the, this, this, um, project is is to show the big things that are working on so I'm working on so the way you actually get them in here if I go into one of my uh, other projects let's say business we can find something that I need to work on so I'm going to set up these e-commerce emails um, this is like a big project that maybe I want to work on later this year so I can come to the task panel and on the right hand side I'm going to click this little pen icon to add this task oops excuse me the plus icon to add this task to another project. So I'm gonna add it to my calendar. I can even choose which section to put it in. Maybe I'll do it in December. And now this task is accessed from business and calendar. It's not a copy of the task, it's the same task, but it's, it's referenced or linked from two different projects. So if I flick back to my calendar now, you'll see there's the task in there. So that's, that's really step one. Um, when you're creating this calendar, obviously you want to start uh, by creating a new project, create sections for how you want to organize the project. Maybe you want to organize by quarter, or in this case, by month. And then you just want to go through your other projects and pull in the big projects or the big tasks that you are working on. And like I said before, you really want to, instead of, um, or in my case, I recommend instead of uh, actually creating brand new tasks in here, I, I like to pull them in from other projects. So. With this project, I can then get a sense of, okay, what are the big things coming up over the next few months? Got this conference, got a couple of big projects that I'm working on in the next few months. So that's the really high level. Then I have my Kanban board. Now the Kanban board is really for planning the next week to two, three weeks maybe. It's it's not really the annual, uh, you know, annual planning. It's not looking months out. It's really just looking at kind of this week in the next couple of weeks maybe. So I'm using a board layout, and I've got columns for planning, in progress, waiting, and complete. So what I would do is when an item from this calendar is ready to be worked on, or I'm, I'm starting to think about it more and it's coming up, I will add it to my Kanban. So you can actually see in the calendar this, pro this task here, this one, and these two are all on the Kanban. You can actually see it's on the, in the green Kanban project. That's because I'm really, I'm starting to think about them now. They're coming up in the next few weeks. So I've added them to the Kanban. So these, these um, tasks, like this one, for example, creating book summary versions, it's, it's in the calendar, it's in my Kanban, and it's in my products. Products is actually the primary project, but it's also linked in these two references as well. So what I would do, yeah, is I would add tasks to this Kanban a couple of weeks away from being due, and they come into planning. 
Then when I'm actually ready to work on them or I start work on them, they move into in progress. So these th things here, these are the little, the projects I'm working on right now. Or, and when I say project, you know, more like big tasks, you know, I'm recording a bunch of videos at the moment. Uh, it's something that's going to take a week or so to get through. Um, so these are the bit, the projects or, or mini projects or, or big tasks that I'm working on. Waiting is like a holding column for things that I can't really move forward right now. This it's just sort of in holding and then complete obviously when they're done. So again, the purpose of this project is really to just summarize what I'm working on right now, what's coming up over the next uh, few weeks or so. And the really nice thing about this in progress column is it helps me to limit how much I work on at once. So rather than having a bunch of things in here, I try and complete these things or move them into complete before I then start on something brand new. So that's kind of the medium view. That's the view for this week and the next couple of weeks. And at the very granular level, we've got the My Tasks page. So this is the page that shows you everything assigned to you from all the different projects. Now this is slightly different to the other two projects. The other two projects are summary projects and as I said, the way you add tasks in here is that you have to add them to multiple projects. So for example, this uh, photo shoot, it's, it lives in business but it's also been added to these two summaries. Compared to the My Tasks, I'm not adding it to any projects to get it onto the My Tasks. The only, uh, the, all you have to do to get it onto this page is to actually assign a task to yourself. So any tasks assigned to me will show up here. So this actually shows me everything that I'm doing. Not just the big things, but everything I'm working on. Even the small little things, something that might take me just five or five minutes or so to do. It shows me everything I need to do today, tomorrow, and this week. So when you assign them to yourself, you're gonna, it's gonna come up into the new tasks section. I actually need to add this to a project, so maybe I'll add it to content. Um, let's just put it into planning. And then I'm gonna give this a date. So actually, I'll, I'll schedule this for today. <clears throat> and now I can actually click this blue dot and mark it for today. And you can see now it moves into my today section. It's right down here. I've actually broken up my today section into a couple of subsections. I've got morning, afternoon, and end of the day. We've also got the upcoming section, which is generally anything coming up in the next week or so. So I've got a few sections for like next actions, quick little things I can work on when I get a free second or, or things that I just need to think about. Waiting, again, similar to Kanban, this is my section for things that I'm waiting on. I need to maybe do some follow up on. And then I have this week and next week. This week and next week, it's all due within seven days, but it's this working week and next working week. So this My Tasks page is the very granular view. It's really showing me only things that are due today, tomorrow, and this week compared to the Kanban, which is generally things that I'm working on or the big, the big tasks that I'm working on this week. But I'll, I'll make a point here of saying that even though I'm working on certain things this week, they don't all live in here. These are just the sort of mini projects or big tasks that I'm working on. These are my fo main focuses for the week. It doesn't contain all the little things. And then finally, there was the calendar, which is the big annual view, the big um, big projects that I'm working on, and I'm planning months in advance for these things. So there you have it. Those are the three different like levels or hi the hierarchy um, that I use for planning, and it's a really great way of keeping an eye on the long-term goals that you're working on, the projects that are coming up in a few months versus the next few weeks and today. Because I know that a lot of people want to kind of create a link between the big goals that they have, but also the things they need to do day to day. And so I think using a structure like this in Asana is a great way to kind of bridge that gap and, and kind of visually see it all in front of you. So there you are. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment down below. Or if you need some one-on-one -on -one support, feel free to book a complimentary in introductory call with me and we can learn more about how I can help you. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next video.